Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only. Coming to you with another episode of New Vegas. All right, when we left off, we were uh, not at Nellis Air Force Base. We were, uh, <laughs> we're here because we're following up on companion missions. Uh, Eddie's back at Prim, so we'll be picking him up in a bit. But I'm here to try and get a start on Raul's. But I have to find one particular person who for right now doesn't seem to be want to be found to be want to be found yeah that's that's proper english yeah <laughs> fuck me anyway doesn't seem to want to be found is what i meant to say so what we're going to do is wander around aimlessly like a bunch of idiots <laughs> until we eventually find them and i have no idea where they're going to be because we tried by their house we waited for hours and nothing so what we're gonna have to do you've right. done us a great service thank you there you are loyal isn't that bomber a beauty thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come true not a problem can i get a code to use the vr pods in the mess hall no, those aren't for outsiders to use. Leave them alone. Oh, okay, I was just curious. Anything else you need? I've got work to do. Well, I mean, I'm looking for ways to make myself useful. If that's so, how about you look into repairing the solar arrays on the roof of the generator building? Oh, yeah? Nothing too complicated about it, but it's a long ways to walk my old bones, and there's been that ant problem over near there. Oh, You can't okay. miss the array. It's on top of the generator building smack dab in the middle of Nellis, between the two runways. I think I've seen that. Yeah, I could do that. Uh, where should I look for spare parts? Huh. If we had spare parts, do you think I'd be asking you to fix the damn things? That's rich. Well, I mean, I, oh, I figured that out. we ran out of spares a while back. And Jack and I have been doing our best to patch the arrays up as best we can. Sadly, we're at our wit's end. That's fair. There have to be All spare right. parts somewhere around the wasteland, but I just don't know where to direct you. You may have noticed we don't get out much. Yeah, a little. Yeah, a little. Um, the only place I can think of is that uh, Archimedes place, I think. Anyway, I could probably repair it on my own anyhow. Uh, let's talk about something else. All right. What's on your mind? Uh, need Bye. to get going, I guess. Okay. Well, I didn't really get to exhaust all the Isn't stuff that... that I wanted to do, but I mean... I could do that. Also, look at that. That's a good thing to see, huh, boss? What are you talking about? That loyal guy. He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. Yeah. If you ask me, that's true. That's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. That is true. Loyal's using his years of knowledge to help his tribe. I think that's a noble goal. Uh, <laughs> at least he knew when to step back and start to take it easy. A lot of people don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with the first one. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. What's on your mind? Old history, boss. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. Oh, It wasn't okay. much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the but best I hope it's big enough. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. Oh, I see. I never killed a scrapper. But I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This mm -hmm. was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. I bet. Go on. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. Oh, we held who we could, but there were so many. I bet. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. Oh. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. What happened then? About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. Oh, Jesus. I smelt the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window but everyone else. My parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters all died. Shit, what happened then? 
but Rafael and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home, but I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. You can't think it was your fault. No one could stand against a dozen armed men all alone. I know that, boss. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. Anyways, forget it. Just wanted that off my chest. I get you, man. Man, that is... That's deep. Sheesh. He has gone through a lot. Also, that hat is going through his head. Let's I get that off. I expect to be awed by your dizzy mercantile sense, boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shush. You shush, you mouthy little shit. Okay. I love you, but... Shush. Shush your face. Okay. Uh, let's head out now. Now that we've done that... We can, uh, go and get Eddie back. Pick him back up and prim. He should be there anyway. That's what the uh, mission is telling me. And after that, we, uh, head off to Camp McCarran. Alright. Back in prim. Man, it's been a long time. A damn long time. Back into the Nash residence. Hey, Eddie! Look at you. you! You look pretty much the same as I left you. Perfect. And let's uh, make some sexual charges. There we go. Perfect. It's nice to have you back, my friend. All right, Nash. Nash, I need hey to talk there, to you, youngster. Hey there. I needed to talk to you about selling Things shit. Things pretty good with Myers watching over us. I can give you a little bit of a discount. I would hope so. All right, let's see what you got. Oh my, you got a couple good things on you. You're not kidding when you said things were going good. All right, um, a couple of those. Eh, maybe not all of them. Maybe get rid of one of these. Just whoop. One to get run of one, not two. Damn it. Okay, well. Fix that now. Okay. Um I could always do with some more dirty water and duct tape. I can always fix those. Alright. Um Actually now that I think about it. Eh, I don't need those. I have enough uh, weapon repair kits for a while. For a long while. I can buy the stim packs, because why not? Alrighty, let's uh, sell some of our stuff, shall we? Some of the stuff we couldn't sell anywhere else. Um, I'm pretty sure we could not, yeah, we cannot sell the Super Sledge down. He just does not have enough money. Sell that. Sell this. That should be enough. Um, Ruby's Casserole. Oh, wow. That deals with a lot of food. And it's cheap. Might as well, yeah. All right. Let's call that good. Thanks. Good enough. You're welcome. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> if Caesar's dead, why ain't the NCR taking care of regular folks yet? Um, because uh, the NCR still has a lot on their plate. Just because Kaiser's dead doesn't mean his group is. Although, to be fair, they still send a lot of people after me. Uh, is there still people down there? Really? Uh, medicine stick. I can't see them, but that doesn't mean they aren't there. They must still be on the, uh... Still be on the old fucking... Roller coaster. That's the fucking word. <laughs> wow. You can tell how many I've been on <laughs> since I started recording, which is zippity doo diddly uh, wow, I can't believe I fucked up the name of it that badly. God damn. Alright, anyway. Now that that's taken care of, we can go to Camp McCarran, which is this way? Ish? Yeah, there it is. Camp McCarran. Woo! And then I know where the next spot we have to go is. Or so I thought. 
Turns out that I was completely wrong in that endeavor because I did not realize that after doing all of the bounties around Camp McCarran, that the first recon people who Corporal Sterling was a part of would be gone. They would have left for Camp Forlorn Hope. I did not realize that until about near the end of this little fast forward section here. Uh, I just kept wandering around, not realizing that he would be outside, not inside. And then when I check outside and realize he's not there either, that's when it dawns on me, oh shit, he's not going to be here at all. He's going to be at the main camp near the dam. So, after all of that, we get that dealt with, we eventually figure it out, we find the map marker, which takes a while, and then we have this weird little interaction with some bloat flies, because I got a little too close. Okay, he, I guess we're doing this. He's just shooting at bloat flies right now. Okay, well, that's done. <laughs> All right. What the flying fuck are you shooting there? Eddie, holy shit. Then a couple more minutes of running around like an idiot trying to figure out where to go. Then I find him in this building. Eventually. Yeah, there you are. Holy fuck. Okay. Hey there, Corporal Sterling. How's it going? I needed to talk to you. Howdy. Name Sterling. First recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember if I had. I'm sure. I'm sure you would. Uh, you remember everyone who passes through here? Got a good memory for faces. Landmarks and such, too. Mm -hmm. Comes with practice, that's all. And a lot of scouting from place to place. Interesting little rifle you have there. Lever action, right? I call her the Long Carabine. Didn't always have the scope. I added that myself. Fair. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. That's the other fair. snipers used bolt action, but Gore Betts reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different. So long as I could hit my targets. And I assume you can. <laughs> Otherwise, he would have immediately said, fuck that, take that. Throw it away. Burn it. Anyway, have you always been with First Recon? Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. I see. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. I see. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas yeah. always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Oh, I see. Why did you leave the Rangers? Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Uh -oh. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpay. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Oh, jeez. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't going to be trekking across the waist on any more long scouts either. Yeah, that's... That's a little hard. Jeez. How'd you manage to escape? Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. Uh, I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then probably. I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a uh, couple I mean, of rangers happened fair. to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Well, I mean, I'd say that's a lucky break. How long have you been stationed here? Going on six months now. But I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. Whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few calves he's stirring up the locals against us. Oh, for sure. Uh, that, that dialogue is actually when he's back at Camp McCarran. Uh, I took care of all the uh, bounties. And I guess that made it so they moved to uh, Camp Forlorn Hope. I should have remembered that. That was clearly what it was going to happen, but I didn't think of it in the uh, in the moment <laughs> that the bounties was what was keeping him here. So uh, yeah, uh, that's my bad. <laughs> so I might just fast forward through all of that bullshit of me looking like an idiot running around. Uh, okay, goodbye. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Alrighty, will do. 
Hello. That's Doc. Yeah, boss. Just yeah. What? What? I'm not that gross. Sure, boss. I'm not that gross right now. Seconds to talk, boss. Oh, now you want to talk? Okay, sure. What's on your mind? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, it kind of got me thinking. Oh, did it? Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service, but instead he signs back on and does what he can. That is true. You think he did the right thing? I mean, <laughs> we'll have to read through these first. Uh, I think it's good that he's so devoted to his duty. More people should act that way. The NCR put a lot of time and money into his training. He owes it to them to use it however he can. Uh, that seems less right to me. Might seem harsh, but a soldier can't do his job properly with those limitations. I mean, true, but I mean, if he's still willing to help, you might as well let him help how he can. Those injuries, he's nothing... Oh! Oh, that's just cruel. That's just cruel. I mean, it's good that he's so devoted to his duty. More people should act that way. You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. Yeah, that's, uh... That's true. Then again, there's a difference between following duty and following orders. Following orders leads to that. Following your duty probably won't. <laughs> You're talking about the Great War, right? What do you remember about it? After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. Oh, geez. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaqueros. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick rider. Oh, yeah. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. Yeah. Wasn't Mexico City basically annihilated because of the Great War? I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. Oh, sh for sure. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. I'm Still, not surprised. Still, the city was full of looters already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Yeesh. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. Oh, I bet. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Yeah. It sounds pretty bad. You're a poet of understatement, boss. <laughs> but there were <laughs> moments fair. it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. Oh, I was just what? looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the Vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. Really? I took it. Not like anybody else needed it, you know? Yeah. And wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed. For the first time since the bombs had fallen. Oh. Isn't, wasn't it dangerous to be dressed so noticeably? It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble. But most of the times it just started more. Yeah, that's Young usually how it goes. to prove themselves would come looking for me. But my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there. Until... Until Rafaela. What happened to Rafaela? She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at her camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe. But some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Oh my god. It's terrible. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. So what did you do? I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything. 
and it was time to give it up. I took off the old vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's another story, boss. Jeez. Fucking hell. That's... Mm. That's some brutal shit, Raul. That's some brutal shit. Fuck. He spent his whole time, his whole time, trying to keep his sister safe after he couldn't keep the rest of his family safe. He blames himself for all of it. Oh. Those, all of those things were random happenstance. You couldn't, you couldn't foresee any of that happening. How? You can't blame yourself for that, man. I, I, I understand where he's coming from. Ah, jeez. Feel like you could always have done more, just a little bit, just something that could have possibly avoided all of it, but... Damn. Man, Rahul is a good character. Oh my god. So well written. Ugh. <clears throat> so good. But at the same time, so sad. Fuck. Mm. Okay. Well, I know the next step, but I've spent a lot of time on this episode. Uh, mainly me running around looking like an idiot. <laughs> so... What's, uh, <laughs> what's going to happen is that I'm going to have to end this episode here. And I'm going to have to continue Raul's quest line in the next episode. Uh, wow. This makes it a really, wow, heavy episode. But, ah, uh, that's kind of how it goes, man. Anyway. And end the episode because fuck thank you all so much for watching click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more and click the like button if you like this particular video and share and comment so we can bring more people into this community we can talk about the games we're playing together and i will see y'all in the next episode this has been the one the only stray cat playing games and learning about raul's backstory everything he's dealt with since he left mexico and his family and everything in between until he we learn about Arizona which will be the next episode and something fell <laughs> this will be his story that we'll be learning for you